All right, guys, Saturday, January 23rd, 2021, and just back out in the garage, about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Tough to be out here today. I was uh, sitting on the couch enjoying the uh, fireplace and uh, a good movie on TV, and uh, I'd been thinking about coming out in the garage, and I uh, got a comment from uh, one of my longtime viewers and commenters, Phil, who inspired me to get out here. So I'm out here. Just to do a little bit of tinkering today, even if I get an hour's worth of work done, uh, it'll be uh, better than not doing anything at all. So uh, we've got the heater cranked up. We're getting a little bit more comfortable out here. It was minus 20 degrees Celsius overnight with the wind chill. So it is definitely cold out here in the garage. I think what I'm going to do to start today, uh, if nothing else, is I'm just going to get cleaned up. I've got uh, rags and tape and brushes and stuff laying on the floor from doing my painting projects. So. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, get the bench cleaned up, we'll get the floors cleaned up and swept up. If nothing else, we'll just get this shop a little bit, or this garage a little bit more organized to be able to start uh, work uh, when we get there. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend at least an hour out here cleaning and organizing, just to say that I've been out here. Uh, who knows? I might even uh, get a little further than that and start actually uh, working on this car today. But we'll see. Clean up oh, first. One more thing, before I forget, I thought I'd address the elephant in the room and that's this air compressor over here that some of you have noticed in my videos and been questioning. So there's a little story behind this compressor. It's not mine, it's actually Les's or it was going to be Les's. He uh, found this uh, through somebody he knows and it's a lightly used uh, compressor that he was thinking of buying for his garage or for his shop. and. Uh, he doesn't have any space in his garage, so he dropped it off here, like I have any space, but anyway, he dropped it off here temporarily and uh, was asking me what I thought of it, and to be honest with you, it's not the greatest compressor as far as specs are concerned. Yeah, it will run some air tools, um, but it probably won't run a good quality paint gun. You can see the specs here. It's a 1.6 horsepower, and it only has... 6.3 CFM at 40 PSI and 5.5 CFM at 90 PSI. So the specs are not great on this compressor and it's fairly expensive. I think that's about a $700 compressor uh, if you buy it at Princess Auto here which is like a Harbor Freight. So it's not the cheapest compressor and the specs are not outstanding on it. So I think what Les is going to do is he's just going to return it. Uh, he hasn't uh, agreed to buy it yet so I think he was wanting my opinion uh, before he actually goes ahead and buy it. It would be a good compressor just for a uh, you know home garage if you didn't uh, have too many requirements or you weren't going to put it through uh, heavy duty cycles but uh, I think Les probably wants uh, a little bit more than what this compressor can offer so I believe it's going to be going back to the original owner. So that's the story on the compressor so just waiting for Les to pick it up and get it out of my garage. Alright, one thing that I can do is I can actually get the cover back on the rear of the differential. So I've got some black uh, Permatex RTV uh, standing by and we're going to use that to uh, affix the cover and then we'll torque down the bolt. So I'm going to have to look for a torque value to see what there is a torque to. So I'm going to have to hit up a, a Nissan 350Z website I guess. Anyway, we'll uh, go ahead and do that and get that job out of the way and uh, we'll move on from there. Alright, cover is now back in place and RTV'd and uh, you may have noticed that uh, I got a little carried away and I actually painted or repainted the factory bolts from Nissan which were yellow on the end. I'm sure that's probably a factory torque mark probably. Anyway, I've torqued those down and uh, reapplied the yellow factory paint. So. Yeah, you're getting a little carried away. Alright guys, we managed to get the uh, frame resituated, or the chassis resituated where I need to be as far as being able to get some space to work on the rear end of the car. So uh, we're just getting ready to remove the stock differential. I've got my motorcycle jack here at the back, which has worked uh, really well for lifting this differential previously. I may need to jack up the rear of the car, or the rear of the frame a little bit, just to get the uh, jack to slide forward a little bit because it's not quite under the nose of the differential and the R200B differential is longer than the stock differential. So we may need to do that to be able to move the jack forward. So anyway, I've accomplished what I wanted to do out here today and a little bit more. Uh, obviously we got the cover on the differential. Uh, I actually started doing a, one more little job on the differential as well. And that was to, if you recall, I had mentioned that uh, this little area back here where the stock Nissan stud goes in needed to be countersunk 
for or chamfered for the uh, Richard Good fastener. So this is the Richard Good fastener and I've taken a step drill and just sort of chamfered that out a little bit and I'm not sure how much I need to go so I've stopped but uh, that looks like it's going to work with the uh, step drill. So I uh, just got to be careful I don't bugger up the threads on the inside here so I've got to uh, be very very careful when I'm drilling. So when we get to mounting the plate that goes on the rear with this uh, bolt or this fastener then we'll check out uh, if we need to countersink that or chamfer that hole a little bit more. So making progress but that's about it for today. Uh, for today. We've got the big heater out now, the 240 Volter, so it's getting a little bit warmer out here. It's about, uh, well, getting almost, almost 15 degrees Celsius, so it's good to see that that thing can keep up with the cold outside. So it'll be a little bit more comfortable in here when I get out here tomorrow to work. We'll just leave this run on the thermostat overnight, and uh, it's supposed to be a little bit warmer tomorrow, so it'll probably be a better day to uh, make some progress on this car. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, Sunday morning back on the TR250 project. And the first thing we're going to do today er, or this morning is uh, jack up the car and get it on jack stands just to get it up a little bit higher. So we can remove that stock differential and move forward with the installation of the R200 uh, Nissan differential. So that's what we're going to do. We got the heat cranked up. It's only 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about 5 degrees Celsius out in the garage, so a little chilly. So we've got to work faster and harder. All right, guys, the uh, car is now up on stands, and uh, we managed to get the uh, differential removed, the old differential removed. So it's sitting here. Again, I've just used my uh, motorcycle jack, which comes in really handy for things like differentials and for transmissions, I've found out. So good little piece of uh, kit to have. If you have something like that, it's going to help you out tremendously. Anyway, there is the wide open space where the stock differential used to be. And of course the sliding axles are there. So um, we're going to get to the next steps of the installation of the R200B diff. I think we'll stop this video here now and I will continue on just solely with the installation now of the R200B differential. So the next series of videos will just be on the installation of that Nissan R200B differential into the Triumph TR250, TR6, could be a TR4A chassis. All right, guys, today is the day to do the uh, Nissan R200B differential conversion on my 1968 Triumph TR250 restoration project. So this conversion can be done on the Triumph uh, TR250, Triumph TR5, Triumph TR6, and the uh, independent rear suspension Triumph TR4, so mostly the TR4As. So let's get to it. I'll break down the components of the Richard Good kit that we have on the table here in front so of me. So this kit can be found on uh, Richard Good's website. His company name is Good Parts. It's goodparts.com if you want to have a look at this kit. There are two kits available. There is a kit available that utilizes the stock sliding axles at the rear of the car. And there is a kit that uses a CV joint conversion that Richard Good also offers for this car. The kit you see in front of you is to use the stock sliding axles. So let's unpackage the parts and have a little bit closer look. All right, here is the kit unpacked. I should make one more mention that this is the kit for the R200B Nissan differential. There is an earlier R200 differential that has a different mount at the rear. Uh, it utilizes actually two studs to mount at the rear of the differential where the R200B uses one single stud. So that is the main difference I think between the um, R200 and the R200B. So just wanted to point that out. So here is the kit unpacked. So you'll see the components of it on the table. Hardware is nicely assembled and vac packed together. Instructions here that I've uh, read through. Um, so let's get busy. So we are going to start the installation process with the assumption that you've already removed the stock differential from your car, which I've already done. Um, so we're going to go from that point on. So hopefully um, you can manage to get the old differential and old drive shaft off your car. And then we'll start with a uh, blank canvas, so to speak, and we'll move forward from there. This will be my first time installing this uh, Nissan R200B differential conversion. And I'm going to be following Richard's directions. Uh, so he's got a uh, two page, two pages of directions. He's got a page worth of uh, parts listing, 
and then he's got a couple pages of uh, color photos to help you along with the uh, installation. So I'm going to be trying to follow Richard's guide to the T. Uh, I may jump around a little bit in here um, and there may, may be some steps that I don't necessarily have to do since I do not have the body on the car it should be a little bit easier to do this conversion than if you have the body on the car and you're working from underneath the car. So here we go, point number one. It's saying that uh, if your differential was not purchased for directly from good parts, that there may need to be some machining done. Now if you look at my previous uh, couple videos on uh, this differential conversion, you'll see the machining that's required. So if you did not purchase this directly from uh, good parts, from the good parts website, um, you will need to do some machining if you pick a differential up locally. That has been done and documented in previous videos. Now point number two, Richard is saying to fill the differential with 7590 or 80W90GL5 gear lube. I'm going to not do that at the moment um, since I have good access to be able to do that once it's on the car since the body is not on. I am not going to put the gear lube in currently unless I need to, unless there's some sort of interference with the bracketry which will not allow me to get to the fill plug I'm going to fill the differential later I'm assuming that I'll be able to get to the fill plug again it's the first time I've done this so we'll uh, all muddle along in this together but I'm not going to initially fill the differential I'll wait to do it afterwards all right step number three and we've already done this on the car as mentioned uh, Richard mentions to uh, remove the uh, rear exhaust the differential the drive shaft and he also mentions to remove the axles, uh, the sliding axles and hubs from the car. We're going to attempt to do the conversion with the axles still attached. Um, so we'll see if that comes back to bite us in the end. We still might need to remove these axles, but temporarily we're going to try to fit them up with them still attached to the hubs. Okay, point number four, Richard is suggesting that you box in the rear differential mounts and reinforce them. This car has already had them done. I'm not sure if I can get a shot of that. Let me try. I can show you what I mean by boxing the differential brackets in. Let's see if I can get the camera under here. Might be a little shaky. Let's see here. I don't know if you can see there that the side of the differential mounts have actually been, uh, have had plates welded to the sides of them to reinforce them. So that's what they mean by boxing the differential mounts in. So it's highly recommended that you do that for this differential conversion. So if you haven't done that, there'll be an extra step for you to do. So the front and rear mounts have both been boxed on this car. And actually, I've got some uh, added structural members here that some of you may not have. That's another whole other discussion that you don't necessarily need to do for this, this conversion. I've just done it to stiffen the frame. But I've actually plated the underneath of this a differential carrier as well. So this is extra strengthened by the bottom of this carrier being boxed in as well. I should also mention at this point that Richard suggests that for bushings in your trailing arms that you have his Nylatron bushings. Uh, he does not suggest using rubber bushings. Uh, these are in fact uh, poly bushings that I have here. I think they will suffice. But Richard is suggesting Nylatron bushings. I actually have Nylatron bushings in the rear suspension of my Triumph TR6. But anyway, I'm going with the poly bushings and hopefully we're going to be okay with just using the hard poly. Definitely not rubber okay, though. Okay, on to number five. The actual work begins. And uh, some of you may have noticed this big C-clamp on the rear of what we call the T-shirt section where the exhaust passed through. So with the Nissan differential conversion, the pinion on the front of the differential uh, it comes forward a little bit longer and there's a possibility of interference with the little hump here on the t-shirt section. So Richard's suggesting that you take a C-clamp and a piece of metal across the bottom of the frame to compress the rear of this t-shirt section down. So basically a two inch section or two inch length you want you to compress. And let me see what the directions say. Uh, he wants it bent down three eighths to a half an inch for clearance of the drive shaft. So we're going to do that now. Okay, sorry for the uh, background noise if you can hear. That's just my heater fan uh, working and unfortunately I can't turn it off otherwise I'll turn it into an ice cube. So you'll have to put up with that uh, fan sound. Anyway, we're going to attempt to uh, flatten that hump out a little bit with the use of this large C-clamp. And uh, we're just going to eyeball it and uh, create some clearance for that uh, 
drive shaft, so we'll see if we can compress this, how easy this is going to be, or hard. It's a fairly stiff piece of metal, so this may be more difficult than you think. Okay, we've given that area a little bit of clearance and uh, we'll see if that's enough when we fit up the uh, differential and uh, we'll do a fit check once we install the drive shaft and make sure we have enough room there. If not, we can always uh, attempt to bend it some more. But anyway, that is done, so we'll move on to the next step. Going to need a little bit of a touch up as far as paint is concerned, but uh, that's no issue. With okay, guys, stuff. point number six on the instructions is talking about the requirement to have a shortened drive shaft and as you know I've had this shortened twice actually the first time they shortened it a very small amount and the second time they looks like they've got it right the distance according to Richard's guideline is 22.25 inches from the center of the u-joint to the center of the u-joint so if I have a look there that is looking pretty darn good so uh, it's asking me now to, uh, and of course the slider in the joint needs to be fully collapsed when you take those measurements. So it's asking me now to install the shortened drive shaft and bolt the front flange to the transmission flange. So we're going to do that now. Okay, we're going to start uh, mounting the rear bracket on the differential. So tools required, uh, you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket. You're going to need a 12 millimeter socket. You're going to need a 10 millimeter hex. You're going to need some medium strength thread locker. You're going to need a torque wrench and you're going to need a ratchet. So those are the tools that you're going to require. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, do the first step, which is actually removing one of the cover bolts. So this bolt here has to be removed. And the two um, bolts that hold in the wheel speed sensors have to be removed because they are going to be utilized by uh, a cup for a couple of pickup points for this bracket. So we're just going to go ahead and remove those now and we'll come back. Okay, those three fasteners have been removed from the rear of the differential, so we're just going to start talking about what hardware is required to mount this bracket to the rear of the differential. So here is the uh, bracket that we're going to be installing. We'll show you that quickly first. So there is the first main bracket, and you can tell that this is where that countersunk uh, lug location is on the back, and we'll, sh we'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, this 14 millimeter fastener here which is countersunk actually goes in that location so you require that okay then you require a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter by 100 millimeter bolt with flat and lock washers which is here you require two 8 millimeter by 75 millimeter bolts with flat and lock washers as well you need the thread locking compound which I've mentioned already and the torque um, is going to be 70 foot pounds for the 14 millimeter countersunk bolt and then the 10 millimeter bolt will be 50 foot pounds and the 8 millimeter bolts will be 25 foot pounds but we'll get there eventually so let me uh, mock up the bracket and I will show you what it looks like going together all right hopefully you can see from where this angle is um, you're a little bit in the way but not too too bad so let's start by getting that bracket affixed loosely with our 14 millimeter countersunk and we're going to do our th blue thread locker on that there we go And just do this up loosely because we need to get these spacers put in. 
so finger tight. Then we'll take our large spacer, and that's going to go with the the larger of the uh, so the the singular large bolt. So that's going to go like this. That is going to go in behind here. This is going to thread through the spacer, hopefully. if you're in focus here. Yeah, you can kind of see that. I know the light's not great over here, but sorry, it's the best I can do. So, I want to put a little bit of thread locker on this as well. Just back this out. Yeah, just again loosely. Okay, we're going to do the other uh, smaller bolts with the spacers now on the two lower locations. And the last one, again, thread locker. Okay. So there are the locations for the bolt holes. So what we'll do is we'll uh, tighten these down and torque them up as specified and we'll bring you back. And one addition as far as wrench sizes are concerned, you need to add an, a 17 millimeter socket to tighten this uh, one 100 millimeter bolt and torque that down. So just wanted to make that addition before I go ahead and torque these up. Okay, and a quick final look of the uh, first mounting plate. So torqued to 70 pounds, torqued to 50 pounds, torqued to 25 pounds. Good to go, on to the next step. Okay, we're on to step number eight, which involves this frame mounting bracket. So that basically installs here, something like this. All right, and it utilizes this three and a half inch bolt and a, a nylock nut. You're not supposed to tighten it yet. We'll just install that and leave it loose. And one last look of that bracket, that's what that looks like. So it just swivels, there's a bushing in the middle here. We've got the nut going through this direction, according to the photo on Richard's instructions. Nylock nut, uh, just hand tight, and that will swivel up like that. Okay guys, now on to the front mount, which is this big aluminum plate. And that just sits directly on the factory isolators on the Nissan differential. It's just something like so. Fits nicely there. Hardware uh, are the two large uh, countersunk bolts. These are a half inch by 20 by 4 inch countersunk. Then these large aluminum flat washers will go underneath with the uh, regular flat washers and lock nuts. 
It is a 5 16 inch hex wrench to do torque of 70 foot pounds on these once we get them installed. Just a quick note, one thing you want to make sure of is that uh, the stock washers on the bottom of the differential are present because you'll need to reutilize these. So unfortunately mine was missing one on the right side so I've had to make one. Fortunately I had some material to be able to make one. But just make sure that if you're buying one at a local uh, a local uh, junkyard um, that they have both of these washers otherwise you're going to have to make one they just fit underneath here on the bottom of this ear and then the plates the large aluminum round plates will go on top of those and just one quick note you'll need either a three-quarter inch uh, open-ended wrench or a ratcheting wrench or a uh, socket and ratchet for the uh, bottom of this uh, nut to hold that while you torque the um, countersunk bolts. And just wanted to give you a bit better shot of what that looks like on the bottom with the lock nut and the flat washer and the aluminum uh, spacer on the bottom. So that looks good. It's all torqued up and ready to go. Next step. Okay, we're just about to move on to the next uh, step of the project which is installing this in the car. And uh, the last thing I did before uh, we get to that point is I put a small piece of tubing on the vent line for the uh, rear of the cover so we'll uh, run that just sort of down towards the uh, the ground once we get this installed. Um, I was thinking of tucking it into the bracket back here, which it'll fit back there. But anyway, we'll figure out a routing for it, but it's on there. So we don't have to deal with that once it's up and on the car. All right, let's uh, move on to point number 10 on the instructions, and we'll talk a little bit about that over so there. the next step uh, mentions that you may need to modify the location for the uh, brake. Uh, brackets here on the left and right hand side of the car and Richard suggests using a uh, an open-ended wrench um, an adjustable wrench to possibly bend these forward to clear the ears the front ears of the differential so we're going to try to fit the differential up and see how much we need to bend that out of the way and we'll do whatever we do we need to do uh, to make that fit properly so there is a requirement to possibly modify where these brake locations are. So I think we're just about ready to uh, try to install the differential and uh, we're going to add some anti-seize on the threads of the mounting studs and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll uh, set the differential up on the um, motorcycle jack and we'll wheel it into place and we'll lift it up and see how we do as far as clearance here on the brake lines at the front. Alright here goes nothing. We'll put a piece of wood under the nose of the differential just to level it a little bit. Not sure if that'll work or not, but uh, slide her in here and check it out. All right, sorry about that guys, lost you there for a second. The memory card was full, I had to go inside and uh, download the camera. Anyway, uh, we're almost home. It's a little bit low on the left-hand side still. And uh, the rear brackets need to go up a little bit still. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is get the uh, spacers and the nut and uh, we'll try to crank that up in the front and uh, see if we can uh, lift it up in the rear a bit more after we move the jack back. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, just taking a quick look at the spacers that mount on the uh, studs, the frame studs that hold up the uh, differential. The two shorter ones go on the front. There is one that has a flat machined into it. The machined flat goes on the right hand front mount to clear the uh, differential ear. 
All right, a little bit of an installation issue. I've got a little bit of a clearance issue with one of the mounting bolts for the rear differential hanger. And you can see it here, just fouling on the frame. So I'm going to have to drop the differential again and make a little bit of clearance here for that bolt. I think it's got a uh, washer in there that I may be able to remove to make up a little bit of uh, space. Uh, but I also might have to clearance this little uh, boxed-in section a little bit to be able to bring the differential up fully. So, going to drop it out again and uh, play around with this little area here. Alright guys, success. Uh, it was just a matter of removing one of the flat washers to get enough clearance. I didn't have to grind anything, so I've left the lock washer on. And uh, we now have enough clearance. Just had to get it by that little hump there. And uh, we're good, so... We'll get the uh, distance tubes and the nuts and we'll secure this differential and then we'll move on from there. I've got anti-seize everywhere. All right guys, a quick look under the differential. There's the uh, front mounts and they've been torqued to 24 foot-pounds and the rear mounts here. And remember that we need to tighten this bolt at the very end here, so we're just about to do that now. The one with the bushing in it. So yeah, it uh, looks pretty good. I think we've got enough clearance on the uh, pinion as well. I need a quarter inch total. I've definitely got more than that there. So we're good there. So yeah. So I guess on to the next step. We'll uh, finish torquing this down first. And then we'll move on to the axles, I believe, is the next step. And I guess we'll have to do a little repaint here on the bottom of the differential where it was sitting against the... Uh, the jack, no big deal. We'll just uh, sand that down, give it a quick coat of paint. It'll be good as new. It's actually not too bad. And just a quick note, uh, as far as the access to the fill port, there is no issues. Um, so the fill port is here and the drain plug down here, which is nice to have because the uh, stock Triumph differentials don't have a actual drain plug in them. So anyway, good access there. So we'll fill this up once we get some gear oil for it before we put the body on. All right, guys, we made it through to uh, point number 15 on Richard's installation guide. And we're probably gonna stop there for the day. It's getting a little bit late. I wanna see a bit of the uh, football game, the uh, Buffalo game. And I might be able to catch the last period of the hockey game. Anyway, differential is now bolted up fully. We have tons of clearance. Uh, at the frame or at the t-shirt section and the uh, differential pinion so we're good there we're all bolted up and torqued up on the differential itself on all the mounts so tomorrow we'll come out and we will do the axles and uh, I'm thinking that probably it'll be easier for me to pull the axles out and do them because there is a requirement to either pin or weld one of the tubes. Um, so it'd probably be easier for me to take that stub axle right off the car and do that. But we'll get there tomorrow. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So anyway, we'll figure out what we want to do tomorrow and we'll finish this project tomorrow and we'll bring you back for the remainder of the Nissan R200B differential project on Monday. All right, we'll upload this so you can see where I'm at and uh, look forward to your comments. Thanks guys.